Welcome back to Trailer Trash. This week we'll be taking a look at the movie The Express, mm -hmm. the story of stoner Seth Rogen running away from murderous drug dealers. His sidekick is played by the man of a thousand faces, James Franco. This time, he's using his Dennis Quaid face. What? Oh, uh, Gary has just informed us that that was the Pineapple Express, which we apparently already reviewed. I don't remember that. What the hell is this then? Black guy playing football? Are they at least stoned? No. Is there wackiness? No. Is there a giant robot? Rob Schneider? N n nothing. Whoa. All right. Okay, well, I guess we'll just watch this. Uh, we'll be back in two minutes and 32 seconds. In 1956, Syracuse University's Jim Brown was perhaps the best running back college football had ever seen. But he was unable to become the first African-American to win the Heisman Trophy. Some said if Brown couldn't do it, it might never happen. One year later, Ernie Davis took the field. Mr. Brown, what's it like at Syracuse for uh, men like us? It's not that different than a lot of places. Good morning, sir. Beautiful day, isn't it? But Schwarzwalder, he's one of the best coaches in college ball. Move, move, move. What are you smiling at? Right about now, I bet you're wondering what happened to that nice gentleman that begged you to come here, huh? Come on, let's go. What are you guys studying? A little bit of everything. Uh, We're on the football team. In that. I don't really know too much about football. Neither does he. Can't let him treat you like that. I say nothing. I do my talking on the field. <laughs> Look at that young man go! Syracuse just may have found their next great halfback. In light of what's going on in this country, do you feel added pressure to represent change? When I'm out on that field, I only think about winning the game. But that doesn't mean I don't know the color of my own skin. You think we've been south? We ain't been south till we go to Texas. We shouldn't play him. I have a responsibility to my team. Jack, Art, and me, we're all a part of your team. Maybe, coach, the rules down here are your rules, too. Now, that's something for color folk around here to open up a newspaper, Ernie, and see your name. You owe them more than just running a ball. I'm playing. You hear me? In a time of change. This is not just a game. We're fighting something else out on that field right now. One man had the courage. I can't even walk in the front door of a hotel. Now, all those people who believe that's right are watching. But you know what? So are they. To achieve the extraordinary. Winning this one means nothing if you lose yourselves. Don't you let anyone steal history away from you. The Express is yet another Hollywood attempt to convince us that football is more than just a bunch of sweaty dudes in butt-tight lycra touching and grunting and jumping on one another. Usually it comes down to one game where the fate of all the people of the world is decided. Hey, why not just toss in a busload of orphans and puppy dogs teetering on the edge of a cliff? And the football game also determines if they live. Just, you know, to clarify that this is more than a mere game. Actually, many historians credit the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to this very game. So true. The main character, I assume, is nicknamed The Express because he runs fast. Syracuse just may have found their next great halfback. The only thing more absurd to me than Jim Brown not winning the Heisman is the fact that many people thought that it was possible that no black man ever would. <laughs> yeah, maybe this whole uh, black athlete experiment will just sort of run its course. Unless they were going to ban black players, get rid of football entirely, or change the name of the trophy to the Duncan Hines Full Flavor Trophy for Football Excellence, I think it's pretty inevitable that eventually a black player would win the Heisman Trophy. The Express teaches us that every white person in the 50s, except for Dennis Quaid, mm -hmm. was an ignorant, violent racist. Yeah, instead, he just hates everyone. Can't you just lay off them while they're doing their jumping jacks? It's about the only time they have during the movie to smile. <laughs> hey, you know what my favorite part of doing jumping jacks is? Uh, no one's yelling racist slurs at yeah, us? Yeah, that's it. Well, at least less of them. Hmm. So, what should you do when, even on your own team, you run into a wall full of racist pricks? Confront them? Oh, no way. I do all my talking on the field. Hey, Dave, you want to go see a movie tonight? Sorry. I do all my talking on the field. When I'm out on that field, I only think about winning the game. But that doesn't mean I don't know the color of my own skin. Sure, there are racist pricks at home, but things could be racist mm, In an effort to die by getting simultaneously lynched, 
run over by a pickup truck, and stabbed to death with a sharpened crucifix that has been lit on fire, the team decides to go play a bit in Texas. Texas, of course, because it's the most racist, hate-filled state ever. It's like the final boss in the civil rights video game. Eventually, the trailer wraps up with Quaid reciting vaguely inspirational lines and most likely winning and teaching folk everywhere, especially white folk, about tolerance, etc. This movie looks like it'll be pretty good. I feel that although Dennis Quaid doesn't really stand out to me as one of the greatest actors of all time, I find that most of what he does, I enjoy. Maybe it's because I have a soft spot for inner space. Who knows? I give this one rum up. Yeah, I got a personal note for Dennis Quaid. Dennis, mm. if you wanted to do something to let everyone know that you're cool with black folks, you could have just bought a Roots album or, or voted for Obama like the rest of us. I'm gonna rent Rudy instead. One rum down. When you film. Oh yes. Yes. You wanna go to Texas this weekend? No. Really? Why not? 